Hi, my name is Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. Let's learn about polynomial division. And uh, to do that, of course, we're going to first review regular old long division. This is something that a lot of people learned but then forgot. So we're going to start by trying to divide 682 by 25. And so this is how we usually write it with this sort of long division symbol here. This number underneath here is called the dividend. And the number up front is called the divisor, 682 divided by 25. And the answer is called the quotient, and it will go on top here. So to do this, we move from left to right through the dividend, and we try to divide nicely by this number. Sometimes we say divide evenly. Um, so first, if I kind of just cover up the rest of this number, we're starting with just a 6. Is 6 divisible by 25? It's not. It's too small. So we, uh, we can't just divide immediately and we move over and add on or collect in another place value. So we have 6 and 8 or 68. So this number, once again, this is a 600 and this is an 80, but we're just going to look at this 6 and 8 together to make 68. Is 68 divisible by 25? Well, we can fit two 25s in there. That would be 50. And so above the 8, the digit that we are working with, we're going to write the number 2 because 2 times 25, so do this now, 2 times 25 is 50. We record that directly underneath here so that the places line up, 8 and 0 line up, 6 and 5 line up, and then we will subtract. Now what this does, this is the effect of, uh, because I have a 2 in the tens place of my quotient, there's going to be a number here. This is like 20 times 25 is 500. I've, all, I've lined it up. We don't typically write this 0 over here, but you could. Doing the subtraction, we're left with 18, which is really 180, because we'll now bring down this 2 to get 182. Now we divide 25, or sorry, 182 by 25, and I can fit, well, you can count by 25s. 4 of them is 100, 150 would be 6, 175 would be 7, and that's our limit, so I can get 7 of those, 7 times 25. 175. Subtract again, and we are left with, uh, it looks like, just 7. Now there are no more places to go to here. If you were going into um, decimal division, where you would have like 27.2 blah blah blah, then you would continue by adding on additional places by adding on zeros. We're not going to do that here because we want this remainder. And that's our goal here, is to divide as much as we can and be left with a remainder. Um, now I'm going to write a, a quick statement of this uh, to represent this. 682 is equal to 25, the divisor, times 27, uh, and then there's a remainder, a leftover bit, so plus 7. If you multiply 25 times 27, you get 675. That's 675, and there's an extra bit 7 to make up the total of 682. Okay, we're going to do a few more of these kind of fast. Uh, let's try doing uh, 74 divided by 3. Three fits nicely into 7 if it's twice. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtracting leaves 1. Bring down this 4 for 14. Uh, we can get four threes in there for 12, leaving a remainder of 2. And sometimes people will write the, they'll write 24R2 up here for a remainder. Uh, and once again, let's just write that little statement. 74 is 3 times 24 plus, there's an extra 2. Okay, let's try, uh, let's see, how about... 420 divided by 4. Uh, 4 is divisible by 4 exactly once. When I subtract here, I'll be left with 0. Now, we don't get to stop there. We have to continue. Bring this 2 down. Now, it says 0, 2, but that's fine. Um, is 2 divisible by 4? Can we get any 4s in there? We cannot. So we bring down an additional number. Now I've got 20. Is now, when I did that, I should write down a zero right here. That's how many times I fit four into two, zero times. Now you need that because in the next one we're going to have a five, and I need this to say 105, 
not just 15. That would be wrong. So when you have to bring down two places in a row, you've got to put that zero in there to show that you were not able to um, divide this number down here by the divisor. And uh, 5 times 4 is 20. Quick subtraction is zero. So there's a zero remainder here. Well, that's nice because that means that 420 is exactly 4 times 105, and we don't need a plus anything at the end. Okay, I think we've got time for one more of these. Let's try uh, 307, and we'll divide that by 7. I hope I left myself enough room here. Uh, is 3 divisible by 7? Uh, nope, we can't get any of those in there. How about 30? Yes, 30 will work out because 4 times 7 is 28. Subtracting, we get 2. Bring down this 7 to make 27. I can get 3 7s in there for 21, leaving a remainder of 6. So that little statement that we've been doing, 307 is 7 times 43, plus a remainder of 6. Now I just want to point out here, we, I just casually wrote these 307, those numbers down there, but this is 307. So there is a zero place in this, uh, in the tens place of this number 307, and that's going to matter quite a bit when we get to polynomials, because we're going to have something similar uh, for polynomials. We'll need to put a, a zero in at times, because it's not there by default. Okay, let's try performing the same kind of division with polynomials then. Uh, so let's start off with an example. How about we try to do 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, and we'll divide that, maybe I'll write it like this, with a division bar, we'll divide that by x plus 1. Okay, so let's set this up in the same way. This is the divisor on the bottom here, so we write that first, x plus 1, and then underneath the division sign we have 3x squared, minus 2x plus 5. Now it's really important that I've written these down in descending degree order. This is the squared term, then the linear term, then the constant term. And also, as I was just sort of mentioning, if you didn't have a linear term, you'd have to put a zero term in there. We're going to see an example like that in a little bit. So the way we do this is we only kind of worry about the highest degree term in the divisor. In this case, that's x. And we don't really worry about the plus 1 when we're deciding what this portion of the quotient should be. So I'm going to look at this here, this highest degree term of the dividend, 3x squared, and the highest degree term here, x, and I check to see how does this divide? How many times can I fit x into 3x squared? And I need this to work out exactly. So uh, let's see, x times something is 3x squared, and it would be x times 3x. Now, in this case, you just do some division. 3x squared divided by x is 3x. So I'm going to write that off to the side here just as a, a mental note. Um, 3x squared divided by x would be 3x. And that number is what's going to go into the quotient up on the top. Now here's the next thing is that this number 3x needs to line up in the correct uh, above the correct kind of term here, matching degree. So I know this is a lot. It's a little bit different than the long division uh, for just numbers. So this 3x is the number that I want to put on the top, and I'm going to put it right here above the 2x, so that they're the same degree. If this had been a squared, it would go up here above the 3x squared. Okay, now let's perform the same multiplication step. Take the top number here in the quotient that we just put in there, multiply it by the divisor, 3x times this. You've got to use the distributive property, so I'll get 3x squared, perfect. See where I'm putting that? And then plus 3x. That's 3x times x plus 1 written out underneath here. Everything's lined up again. You have to line up all of the term degrees because we're about to subtract, and you can only subtract if you have like terms. Now, this one will always go away if you've chosen the correct number here. So that's a 0x squared. I'm not even going to write that down. And then we have negative 2x minus 3x. We're subtracting this, so be really careful here. That is going to be a minus 5x or negative 5x. 
Ooh, okay, so now we're ready to sort of bring down the rest of this dividend. So I'm going to bring this down the plus 5. Put it right here. When I do now, I'm going to do the same step. I'm going to look at this first term only and this first term only, and I'll just divide. Negative 5x divided by x is negative 5. So there's the subtract 5 on the top. Now we multiply that, subtract 5, negative 5 times this binomial, the divisor, and write it under here. Negative 5 times x minus, or sorry, x plus 1, negative 5x, negative 5 times plus 1 is negative 5. Ooh, almost the same, but not exactly the same. When you subtract, the x terms will go away, but we'll have 5 minus negative 5, which is positive 10. And that is the remainder. So let's write our little statement here. We can now say that 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 is equal to, we take the divisor, quotient and the remainder. Now that looks kind of like factoring, but it's not exactly because we have this extra number at the end here, this remainder. If there had been no remainder, that would have been the same as factoring, and we'll learn about that in a little while. Okay, let's try another example. How about uh, 5? Uh, how much room do I need here? 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 1. And we'll divide that by x minus 2. Okay, so this is a cubic instead of uh, something smaller like a quadratic, um, but everything's still the same. I've got degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0. So the terms are in order and all of the degrees are there from 3 down to 0. And this is written in the right degree order, 1 and then 0. So I'm ready to start looking at 5x cubed and x. Just do a quick division. What's 5x cubed divided by x? That would be 5x squared. So we write that right here above the sort of squared column. That It's like place value. 5x squared times x minus 2. That'll be 5x cubed. That matches because we made it match. And then we have a minus 10x squared. Subtracting now, 0, but subtracting here, we're going to end up with positive 12. I feel like I'm emphasizing this a lot, but it's really important. It's very easy to get confused when you're subtracting here. Watch your integers. Okay, uh, let's bring down this negative 7x. 12x squared divided by x is 12x, and that's positive, so plus 12x, and it lines up nicely with my x terms. 12x squared, then we have a minus 24x. Subtracting, I'm going to end up with a positive, looks like 17x. Bring down my plus 1. Last uh, part of the quotient, 17x divided by x is 17. That'll be 17x and minus 34. All right. When I subtract, 1 minus negative 34 is the same as 1 plus 34, which is positive 35 is the remainder. All right, let's get a little statement in here. Uh, well, it's a big statement this time. 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 1 is equal to x minus 2 times the numbers on the top there, the polynomial on the top, 5x squared plus 12x plus 17, and we have a 35 remainder, so it gets added on at the end. All right, let's look at an example where some of the terms are kind of missing. So let's try to divide um, negative 2x cubed plus 7x minus 9 by, uh, let's say, x minus 3. So you can see here we have cubed and then a linear term, that's uh, degree 1, that's the exponent there, and so there's no squared term. So when we do this, we have to be careful, we have to write in a 0x squared term to kind of space things out appropriately, so we have a place to write things 
in our little uh, system here that we record everything in. So I'm going to start by writing down that term. That's fine. Now here's the special term. Maybe I'll use a color here. Let's go plus 0x squared. That's the term that we're including now. And this is very much like when we looked at that example earlier with, uh, with our old, just the numbers. When we looked at 307, there's a zero there to tell you there are no tens. This is just like that, except uh, it's an entire term that's missing. Um, okay, so that's it. That's the only difference. And so when the time comes, we can use that. And now we have a place to put any x squareds. In fact, we're going to have one right away. Negative 2x cubed divided by x is negative 2x squared, so that when I multiply we get that, and then I'm going to have a plus 6x squared. Everything's got to line up here nicely. So just by padding that out with a zero term, we get what we need. That's negative 6x squared, and I'm just going to keep going here. That's a great number. That is the remainder. So writing this out then uh, in our longer form, our little statement, 2x cubed. I don't need to write the uh, zero term now, but I'll just write from the original expression. That is equal to x minus 3 times negative 2x squared minus 6x minus 11. Okay, let's do just one more of these. Um, what if we divide by something that doesn't just have an x in the front? Like these all just started with x plus or minus a number. Let's start with something slightly different. How about we try uh, dividing by 2x plus 1? And let's use a dividend of 4x cubed minus 20x squared minus x plus Three. And I'll just double check that I have all the terms I need. Looks good. So in this, we're going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to take 4x cubed and divide by 2x. Maybe I'll write that off to the side here. 4x cubed divided by 2x is equal to 2x squared. So I'll need that up here. 2x squared is going to go right here above the x squared term from the dividend. Multiplying, I get 4x cubed. That, of course, matches up. And let's see what I have here. Looks like plus 2x squared. Subtracting, negative 22x squared. Okay, and then we have a minus x from there. Do the same kind of division. Negative 22x squared divided by 2x is negative 11x. That's going to go here in the column of x's. So negative 22x squared, and then we have a minus 11x. When I subtract those two, I'll be left with a positive 10x. That's negative 1 plus 11, or minus negative 11. That's a positive 10x. Then we have a plus 3 at the end. This division I can do kind of quickly. That's just 5, 10x plus 5 do my subtraction, negative 2 at the end, that's the remainder. Okay, so final statement is that 4x cubed minus 20x squared minus x plus 3 is equal to 2x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 11x plus 5 and then we have a minus 2 remainder. And you know what? I'm just realizing I forgot to write my minus 42 on the last one. So go back and fix that if you didn't notice it yourself. Uh, I forgot to put my remainder on the end. So there's my remainder here. Um, and you know what? There's one other thing uh, um, I'm just going to mention is all of my numbers were pretty nice here. 4 is divisible by 2. 22 is divisible by 2. But if it's not, if this was 23 or if this was 7 and doesn't divide nicely, 
you'll end up with a fraction up here. That can happen. So just a word of warning, sometimes these don't work out as nicely as the ones that I've shown you here. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Thanks very much.